Hi, in this video I will show you something often mentioned in literature but rarely seen or heard in reality, popcorn noise, as it is produced by some but not all transistors like this one. I confess that I am interested in things that cannot be explained by our current science. In fact, I think that every serious scientist should know the famous phrase that there are more things in heaven and earth than you can dream of. One such mysterious thing is noise, not really white noise, but especially popcorn noise in semiconductors. Some call it random telegraph noise, flicker noise or burst noise. However, I don't care about the perfectly fitting term. I personally like popcorn noise because what I found often sounded like that. Even some Russian scientists found that flicker noise could be entangled with parapsychological phenomena, as written in this book that I have received long ago from one of the publishers. One day I started to get popcorn noise, but no success. Although there are many papers about it, nowadays it seems to be a topic in MOSFET nanoscale chip structures only. But then I remembered a set of old transistors and diodes I got from a former colleague. His father collected them, he died, my colleague didn't want to keep them, thinking that I might be interested. At that time I thought, oh no, what to do with such old stuff, but I kept them because I can't easily throw away things. According to some cards included in the packages, they are about 50 years old now. Well, so I started to experiment with them and, to my surprise, especially the ones with plastic housing and a few with a metal one, unveiled wonderful popcorn noise. You will hear all of the different voices at the end of the video. There are models that are trying to describe such noise with mathematical formulas. Nice seems that when humans hear the word model, they consider a topic to be understood. But often it is not much more than a formula, no real understanding. Some explain the generation of popcorn noise by what they call charge traps in semiconductors, especially those that contain defects or impurities. I can somehow accept that for MOSFET devices, but charge storage in ordinary bipolar transistors that is even kept for minutes, hours or days, that does not sound much likely in normal NPN structures. There are no gates, no way to control current flow with just charges. Anyway, if somebody knows more, please leave a comment. The circuit I used for testing the transistors is pretty simple. I found that the level of popcorn noise depends on the impedance connected to the base. The higher the better. So I used a 1 mega ohm resistor to feed a more or less constant current to the base. Together with a 100 kilo ohm resistor at the collector, I got a reasonable output voltage that needed just a moderate amplification before sending it to a scope or to an ADC. I tried to measure as precise as possible using the shielding method described by the famous analog engineer Jim Williams from Linear Technology in his application node 83. He obviously loved his work. I have not seen something like that in actual documents. Somehow many engineers have lost to have joy at work and imagine the quality people if they would see a cookie box in a data sheet written today in the world of rigid processes. So this is how my cookie box setup looks like. The transistor with the preamplifier shown in the circuit before is located in a thermally isolated tube together with the heating resistor and a simple thermal regulator that keeps the temperature of the inside at about 32 degrees Celsius. Besides, there is a 16-bit ADC board that samples the signal with 16 kHz. Outside, there is a Raspberry Zero that allows long-term logging to an SD card. The whole setup is supplied by an old-fashioned linear regulated power supply to avoid any disturbances that are often produced by switching regulators. Before listening to the solo performances of the popcorn transistors, let me show you one mysterious thing I noticed when doing a long-term monitoring of one of them. 
it suddenly changed its voice character for about a day, flipping back to the previous character later. Once I tried to disturb the behavior by switching off and on the base current, moving a magnet around and heating up the transistor, but I could not find anything to trigger a behavior change. I could even not see any relation to humidity or atmospheric pressure, at least not at a first glance. So the question remains, why is it changing its behavior for hours, even for a day? What is going on inside? Aging is not much likely because then a return to a previous character would not be very plausible. If it's aging, I would expect an ongoing behavior change, like a motor that degrades, sounding different when it grows older. So now, for the rest of the video, you can listen to the music of some interesting transistors I found. Each one has 24 seconds on the stage of this little concert. <laughs> 